Welcome to Code with Kurt, the channel that brings you the latest Google Sheets and Google Apps Script videos. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I use the simple Google Apps Script trigger of on selection change to copy rows from one sheet to another. So in this example, I'm going to use the on selection, on selection change trigger to mark a row using this column F. So if I click in this cell, it's going to mark this row with an X. Click that one with an X. Click that with an X and in that one as well. So I got these four rows marked and next I'll hit my custom copy rows and what it's going to do is going to take the ones that are marked with an X and move them over to my copy sheet table over here. So this is a way that if you're going to go through say you have a thousand rows of data that you have to go through and look through each one and mark and then you can come up here and copy into a sheet. You can actually have more than one function up here. Say you want to copy rows into this sheet, copy rows into this sheet, copy rows into this sheet. So you can mark the ones, copy, pick up the other ones, copy, and copy the other ones. This way you can organize your rows of data quicker. So I'll give you a step-by-step -step process of how I put this together. If you're new to this channel, subscribe to catch my latest videos. Let's get started with this video. Here I am on my Google spreadsheet. I have it called on selection change trigger. Uh, I just have a header record here of color, year, miles, model name, make name, and just data. No formulas or anything. And then over here, and I got that sheet called data below here. And I got another sheet called copy to sheet. And that has the same header of color, year, miles, model name, and make name. And that's it for the Google Sheets. Next, I'll go to my app script, go to tools, script editor, and I'm going to rename this on selection change trigger. I'm going to rename it to that. Next, I'm going to copy in my Google app script code. Now I got that copied. I'm going to hit save. All right, the first thing I'm going to go through is how to add that custom menu part of this code. So I'm going to go down here to the bottom and I got this on open function here, which is another standard simple trigger with Google Apps Script. And when this happens is whenever I open the file up, whenever I open the file, it's going to call this function add menu. And this add menu function, what it does is it adds a tab of custom to my menu on top. And then within that, it's going to add a drop down of copy rows. And what this is doing, it says add item. And then copy rows is my function that I'm going to be calling when you click copy rows. And then that's going to be added to the UI. So that's actually going to add it to my custom menu, which my custom menu is going to be added to the top, which will be added right next to help over here to the right. So then next I'm going to go to copy rows here, scroll right here. And what this is doing, this is actually taking the rows I have marked with an X and copying them over to the sheet of copy to sheet. So here I got, I'm declaring my sheets object of copy sheet and data sheet. I'm getting all the data out of my data range, which is the first table with my data. Right here, I'm grabbing all this data. And then I'm getting the, the values of that range. So that's going to put it into an array, a multi-dimensional array, with each row with its each, each array. Each row has its own array. So from there, I'm getting the length of it. And then I'm going to be going through each record. And I'm starting with one here. I don't want to start with zero. Array start with zero for the key, but I'm going to start at one because I'm going to skip the header record. I don't want to go through that. So next, I'm going through each one of these, passing the row number here, or the basically the array index in, and grabbing column or in the multi-dimensional, everything starts at zero, so this would be five. So if I count over here in rows, you would always have to add one for rows. So I got one, two, three, four, five, but the array would start with zero, one, two, three, four, five, which would be F. 
So then I'm checking if there's an X there. If there's an X, I'm gonna pin that row to my copy sheet, which is the copy to sheet over here. Right there, I'm gonna add that row in here. So that's how this works. It takes whatever's marked with an X, copies it over to the other sheet. Now the on select change thing here, the simple trigger, how this works is this is how, what I use to mark it with an X. So basically what this does is this thing fires every time I select a cell in this sheet. And it can be any cell. It could be here, here, anywhere. But I'm going to specifically look for this column right here when I'm selecting. So from there, it passes an object of E in here. So this E range, E source, getting the spreadsheet, the range, the source. I'm going to get the sheet name from the spreadsheet using the spreadsheet get active sheet get name. I want to know the name. I want to know the column that I selected the cell I in. I want to know the row that I selected in. And then from there, I'm declaring the data sheet object of that sheet as well. So I'm going to use that later as well. By passing the sheet name into get sheet by name, I'm getting the object. So from here, I'm going if greater than one. So I'm not excludes my uh, header record and if column equals six which is the column F here over here and the sheet name equals data which is the sheet that has my data next I'll be looking to see if the cell I checked in has an X so if it equals X then I'm gonna blank it out so I have it so if you click in it once, it'll mark it with an X. If there's an X already in there, if I click it, it blanks it out. So it's kind of like a, more like a switch of some sort or a check box. You know, you check it, uncheck it, basically. So then the else marks it with an X. And then these two lines I have commented out, I could take out here. So I don't need those lines. So I could save it again. So that is my trigger. Now, once I have this set up, I am going to go over to this, this I thing right here, the overview. I'm going to click that. Sometimes the trigger doesn't start up right away for some reason. I've had some issues with this version of App Script. So I come over here to this and then I clicked my container. So this is going to jump me to my spreadsheet that I have. It's going to open it back up with this. Now I feel like that kind of starts the trigger going here. So this sheet might not work anymore. So I'm going to X that out. So I have this sheet right here. So now if I click anywhere here, it should start working. There it is like that. So I marked the first three rows. Now I can go up to custom, get copy rows and it's going to keep me take me through my authorization. So I'm going to continue, hit that, advanced, click and allow. And one thing to note here is if you go back between each sheet here, say I go back over here, once you come on this sheet and your cell is in one of these cells, it'll think that you're selecting that cell. It's kind of one of the things I, I don't like about this trigger because I, I really want it to be like if you select it, you know, with your mouse or you move it around, that's the selection I was hoping for, not if you're jumping in between sheets. So if you're going to jump in between sheets, it's important to check outside this column here. Otherwise, it'll check it if you're in this cell here when you're bouncing around the sheets. So again, I'm going to call this function again it took me through the permissions and usually it fails the first time when you're going through permissions so now I'm gonna hit copy rows again and now I copy those over here so I can take another row and I can copy that as well mark that click out hit custom and then copy row and that should add it on the bottom here so that concludes this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave it below the video. I will copy this code in the comment section below the video. I'll also show you some documentation 
of this trigger as well. I'll leave a link in the description of the video below. Until next time. Yeah.